You know, guys, I never want to miss an opportunity to bring a little history into whatever it is we're doing. So I thought it would be neat to just let's take a block here on Center Street and let's talk about the way it was back in the 50s and 60s. This building on the corner uh, at one time was actually a supermarket. It was uh, Piggly Wiggly was here. And uh, then uh, back in the late 60s, early 70s, a gentleman by the name of John Lavers had a meat market here. There was also a fire in this building back in the 70s. And um, it, was, um, it was bad, but not bad enough that, you know, of course they could, they rebuilt everything and got it. Let's walk on down. When you stop and think about everything that's happened in this city and all the history that's here, you can't help but wonder, you know, who walked these same sidewalks or who walked the same area back in the 16, 17, 1800s and the 1900s. This, I have to tell you, this was headquarters number one. This was Jeans, and Jeans had a, a thing on his sign that said, I think it was the biggest, littlest store in the world, and it was. I don't care what it was, I don't care what you needed, you could walk in this store and get it. All the way back in the back, he had a fountain. The best cherry Cokes, the best vanilla Cokes, the best ice cream, and this is where we came. This is where we would, bring our bicycles and we were just like back in the old west riding horses. We would ride our steel bicycles up here and park them and go in here and grab a Coca-Cola and or an ice cream or a, 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 a candy bar and come out and talk about what our next adventure was going to be. And I'm not just saying that. We as kids growing up here every day was an adventure. True, we didn't have any fast food restaurants. We didn't have the conveniences we have today, but we didn't know that. And we absolutely loved what we had and we made the most out of what we had. Let's walk on down. Up these stairs, this is where Dr. Cecil Bruton and Dr. Bailey Dickens had their offices. And of course, as kids, anytime you got sick, this is where you ended up, along with another doctor, Dr. Lungenhauser, who was down on the other corner. Now back then, and this is interesting, because I remember you could call the doctor's office and you could tell them little Johnny's sick. And he would say, well, I'll come by the house on my way home. And he would, he'd make a house call. But he would always tell you to put a pot of water on the stove. So you'd put a pot of water on the stove when he came and this is what he would take the glass syringe, the needle put in and he would boil it and sterilize it because you knew you were going to get a shot of penicillin. Now that's just the way it was. So 900,000 units of penicillin and that cured everything back in those days. But this was Dr. Bailey Dickens and Dr. Cecil Bruton in addition to Dr. Bailey and Dr. Bruton, uh, Dr. Rotifer also had his office up there and he was the, uh, our local dentist. And across the street, upstairs in that corner building, there was another dentist and his name was Dr. Wolf. And uh, so you had, actually we had two dentists. Uh, we were uptown. We had two dentists to choose from and we had about three or four doctors to choose from. So let's move on down to the next building. This was Steger's Drugstore, and um, Mr. Steger, a uh, great guy, he, uh, he and his wife were, uh, they were part of, back in those days, the fire department uh, only had like four paid members, and the rest of it was a little volunteer outfit that uh, augmented the uh, paid department. And um, uh, Mr. Steger and his wife, uh, they always, whenever there was a fire at nighttime, they always brought something to drink and something to eat for the firemen that were, you know, out fighting the fire. 
uh, great folks. Come on, let's move on down. This park that you see here now, back in the 50s and 60s, there were two buildings here. This was the Palmetto Cafe, and it was owned by two Greek immigrants, uh, George and Chris Verdos, and they were from Valparaiso, Indiana. And they had the Palmetto Cafe right here, and as a kid, we would come here and you know, they, you could run in there and order a Coke or whatever. If you had a nickel or if you had a dime, you knew you could get in there and get something and get out. Uh, George was uh, like in our family because he was godfather to my brother Mike. And uh, so we, uh, we always enjoyed doing this, you know, coming down here. Then, right here was another storefront and this was Pappas's liquor store. And it was owned by another Greek named Pete Pappas. And Pete, you could go in there and this is where everybody seemed to congregate. Pete was a, a, a delight to be around. He was a jolly fellow with a roly boly pe uh, belly and he always smoked a big, thick, round cigar. And whenever the door would open, of course you could, the, the cigar smoke would just come out of the, the liquor store. And, uh, but this is where, you know, people would congregate and talk and then they'd go next door to the cafe and they would uh, get a cup of coffee or something there or come over here and get a beer. And then this building is known as the Three Star Building. And coming up, it was actually a barber shop back in the 50s and 60s. And a gentleman by the name of Bobby O'Quinn owned it. And the chairs were over, as you walk in, they were over on the right. And of course, Bobby's chair was up next to the window. Then over on this wall was a, a big antique shoeshine uh, booth. And there was a gentleman in there that would shine shoes. And so people would come in, get their shoe shine. There was chairs waiting on this wall. And then there were like three barbers, they would get a, a haircut. Mr. Roberts, uh, uh, Archie Lawhorn, um, and of course, uh, Bobby O'Quinn. Dad built a boat for Bobby, and the name of it was the David Bryan. And uh, that boat fished out of here for years and years and years. But what's interesting about this building is, there was a door, and in the back was a pool room. And at nighttime, they left the front door unlocked. And if you wanted to play pool, you came, walked through, went in the back, and you played pool. Now this is where, and I remember as a kid, I remember coming down here with my grandfather, coming here with my dad. This was a place, they didn't really play pool, it was just a place for them to congregate. It was almost like the uh, McDonald's crowd today, early in the morning, except this would be in the evening time. And then whoever left that night would, I guess, just lock the door and go home. We didn't really worry about crime back then because we really didn't have any crime. We really don't have any today to speak of. Uh, I know I grew up at 408 South 5th Street and um, we lost our skeleton key. Our front door had a skeleton key and we lost that key. And I know for the last 15 years, the door was never locked because we didn't have a key. And we never worried about it. And uh, the neighbors always looked out for you. And if somebody pulled up that they didn't recognize, they're gonna go ask them, what are you doing here? Why are you here? And you know, can I help you? That sort of thing. Neighbor looking after neighbor. And, uh, I've talked to a lot of newcomers who are living here today and they say the same thing. They say this is just absolutely paradise to live in. But let's move on up. On the corner here, uh, this is today is a jewelry store, but this used to be a five and dime. And uh, it was another magnet for us kids because we could always pick up enough Coke bottles at two cents each to come here and grab something. But let's move on down to the next block because there's some interesting things on the next block. 
We're on the corner of Center and Fourth right now, and uh, there are some significant buildings here that I wanted to just briefly mention. One is this building right behind me. This was actually Wass's drugstore. And um, upstairs was uh, Dr. Carl Lungenhauser's uh, office. Now, Wass has also had a, um, a, 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 what do you call it, a, a bar, in the, not a bar, but a little deli-like uh, uh, where you could go in and they would have, uh, you know, you could get a grilled cheese sandwich or you could get a ham and cheese or you could get a hot dog or a hamburger and a, a milkshake. It was just a great place to go. The building over here is our post office and it's, uh, I always enjoy going to the post office. The post office has a lot of history. It was built in 1912. And my great grandfather, Robert Franks, uh, worked on it and helped build that building. And uh, so I enjoy, but also on the second floor, uh, a gentleman by the name of uh, Rudolph Mills. He was the, uh, uh, you would go to him to join the military. And that's where everybody would go to sign up for the military. That's where I went and a friend of mine, Johnny Bodine, he went with me and uh, we went in on the buddy plan. I don't even know if you can do that anymore. Um, it lasted about six months and then when we got to Germany, we got split up, but that's what we did. The other building over on the other corner was actually Florida National Bank. And that building was, when that building was built, everybody was like, wow, we are really big time now. Have you seen this modern building that they're building on the corner? Because before that building, there was a huge house there. And there, in the lot behind it, the uh, National Guard had an army tank parked there. Like a lot of small cities, towns you would go to, the National Guard would have a vehicle. And, but about once a year, they would come and crank that vehicle up and drive it through the streets of Fernandino. And uh, I remember one time down on Fifth and Cedar, they, it was a hot summer day and the tracks, when they went around a corner, actually made an Im impression in the asphalt and uh, it stayed there for years and years and years. And then of course we've got the courthouse on the corner and this is where we are now. I, I love this old courthouse uh, because Fifth Street is where I was born and raised. So this was, uh, this was my territory. And uh, I used to come by this courthouse I don't know how many times a day on my bicycle, me and all my cohorts. Um, but the, the courthouse has been completely renovated. I'm very proud of that. I was a county commissioner here for years. Uh, I was a Port Authority commissioner. All total, I was in office for 16 years. And uh, we got a lot accomplished, and I'm very proud of that. I want to remind you that this is Amelia Island TV, and uh, this is going to be, this is the Nick Diona show, and I hope now you know a little bit more about me and what we're doing and why I'm doing it. I'm doing this because I have a real passion of preserving the history of Fernandina Beach and Amelia Island and Nassau County. Uh, I, I tell you, out of all 67 counties in the state of Florida, this is the best county to live in and this is the best city to live in. And I will, I'll go up against anybody with that statement. Uh, but remember, it's Amelia Island TV and the website is ameliaisland.tv. That's ameliaisland.tv. And uh, it's the Nick Diona Show. Just one more drink to her memory for the whiskey man and me.